Welcome everyone. This is going to be the first class of the North American section of the layman course. I'm JC, as you guys have come to know me a bit over the last three weeks. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to talk about UTXO, blockchain, and I'm just going to I'm just going to be sharing with you guys some stuff that that uh that I've learned along the way. So, um the topic of today's class is going to be we're going to talk about addresses. I think I may it may be more comfortable to draw my finger. Let me try this a few a little bit more. We're going to be talking about addresses. We're talking about uh boxes and we're also going to talk about registers and we'll start by covering this um at a, at a high level and over the course of the coming weeks you know we'll we'll take a deeper dive into into each of these things so just give me another confirmation please that you guys can see this okay um yeah i can see it so anyway let's um let's 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 get started so where should we start i guess beginning is a good place um what's a blockchain right so that is a good question to start asking and uh i'm gonna ask uh can anyone give me like a one-liner of what a blockchain is it's a ledger uh with a historical ledger i guess okay ledger is a good start anybody else it's immutable uh it's a ledger that's immutable and available to everyone basically a ledger that is immutable i think i'm spelling immutable correctly with two m's yep it's a ledger it's immutable also uh, widely distributed widely distributed can you think of another word for that decentralized yes it is distributed distributed gosh i hate this so much i i kid you not i, I don't know why this 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 is giving me such a thin uh pencil there we go Okay, we'll take it from here and I'll clean this up at the very end. Okay, ledger, immutable. Okay, a blockchain is a ledger, it's immutable, and it's decentralized. What does it really mean? What does it mean that it's a ledger? It's, it's an instrument for storing information, keeping track of data. Um, keeping track of things that have happened. So how does a blockchain keep track of information? How does it store data? So as you may know, there are two popular uh, accounting models uh, for blockchains. One is, these are not the only ones, but these are some of the most popular ones um so the accounting model or sorry the account based model which is uh been popularized by ethereum and then there's the utxo model uh which was pioneered by bitcoin so these are essentially ways in which a blockchain stores its information in the account model, we have accounts like you may have in a traditional banking system. So, you know, you have something like a table of addresses, and we're just going to keep the simple one, two, three, and the balance is five. Account four, five, six has a balance of 10, um, seven, eight, nine has a balance of 20 so on and so forth um 
So that's one way to keep track of, in this case, financial information. Uh, but there's also the other, another way, um, the way the UTXO model does it, uh, which is basically we can think of it this we, we we can think of it this way. We can think of the blockchain as this big box, and we can think of that big box as containing a set or a collection of little boxes um, just kind of scattered all over the place. And each of those little boxes contains information. So let's start um, talking about the UTXO and then we'll transition into EUTXO, which is uh, Ergo's accounting model as well as Cardano's. So very simplistic view of how information or data is kept track of in a uh, UTXO uh, base blockchain is, so we have these little boxes, right? We have no accounts. We have no accounts in, in, in the UTXO model. We have UTXOs, which in case I'm, I'm sure all of you know, but I'll just state it for the record, U UTXO stands for unspent transaction output. An, un, uh, an unspent transaction output is something that came out of a transaction which can be used as an input for um, future transactions. So in the UTXO model, a box could be as simple as um, a box. Every box is associated with, with an address or, or a public key. So a UTXO in the blockchain like Bitcoin, let's keep it very simple and high level may have an address associated with it and a value associated with it. And let's say, you know, this box could have one Bitcoin, right? So these two pieces of information are key because only the person who has the private key that corresponds to the address associated to this box can spend or can unlock um, a box. So this portion, this piece of information about a box uh, or a UTXO, you can also think of it as a lock. So you have a box that has a lock in it. And in order to be able to unlock it or access its content, uh, you have to you have to have the right key. In this case, a key would be a private key. So, in a U, in a UTXO chain, uh, a box might be as simple as this: has an address associated with it and um, a value as well. Uh, but in the EUTXO model, let's um, let's go down here. So how does how does EUTXO um, differ from UTXO? What does it add to UTXO? So that's that was uh, actually something that was asked of you look into for your first homework. So can anybody give me a few points about what's different about EUTXO? What does it what does it add? How does it extend the it has a it has a script and metadata attached to it. It has a script and metadata attached to it. Okay, I'll take that. Uh, I'll write down script. Um, let's say that well, metadata data that that works. Um, think anyone else? I don't know if it's different than anyone else. Should I? Nice, nice. Um, um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if it's different. Um, but um, it only like is it, it only goes one way to spent. It creates new uh, um, new blocks, or is that the same thing as the UTXO model? I'm. I know. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. And let me say it back to you. 
in that sense, uh, UTXO and, and UTXO are the same. You have you have boxes, you have unspent outputs, which you can only spend once. So once you initiate a transaction and you pass a, a box as an input, um, if the transaction succeeds, it'll be marked as spent and that transaction will create new outputs, which are immutable. So in order, in order to in order to in order to access the contents of, of a box of a UTXO, you have to spend it, and then the transaction will create new new inputs. Sorry, uh, new outputs. Uh, so in that sense, EUTXO and UTXO are the same. But these two things right here, uh, these two things right here are really uh, the big thing that UTXO adds to the UTXO model. So uh, you guys are seeing my screen, right? So I mentioned how in a UTXO system, a box, I'm just going to refer to, I'm just going to continue to refer to a UTXO as a box because it's one, it's much uh, shorter to say, and two, it's the terminology uh, in ergo. So uh, one, you guys just start to get used to, to to thinking in these terms. So a box might be as simple as having an address associated with it um, and a value. Um, whereas specifically Ergo's UTXO extends that so that let's uh, let's look at the anatomy of let's look at the anatomy of a box in Ergo. So I'm going to have to I need a little bit of more space here. Hang on one second. Let's see. Okay, thank God this doesn't look too bad. Okay, great. So going back to this for a second, like I mentioned, a box is associated or is tied to an address, and if you have the right key to open that lock you can you can spend the con you, you can access the content of that box um but it's limited to addresses and you know public keys and private keys uh whereas whereas the utxo model the extended utxo model um extends that so that it's not only um an address uh that you know that determines whether sorry it's not only the private key associated to the address tied to the box that determines who can spend it. You can also have arbitrary, you, you can have scripts with arbitrary logic or smart contracts um, that are evaluated uh, when a transaction um, is being validated. And if that script resolves to true, uh, the box will be able to be spent. Otherwise, it won't be able to be spent. So TLDR, um, not, not only are we able to say only Alice can spend this box, but we can say stuff like only Alice can spend this box if, uh, you know, it's sunny at 3 o'clock, right? And additionally, uh, we can include um, arbitrary data in the box that can be leveraged by uh, decentralized application or dApps. So with all that said, let's take a look at the anatomy of a box in Ergo. So in Ergo, a box is an object that is made up of... 10 registers. So we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, three, six. I'm running out of any more registers. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-twenty-four, thirty-twenty-five, thirty-twenty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen, thirty-seventeen, thirty-eighteen, thirty-nineteen, thirty-twenty, thirty-twenty-one, thirty-twenty-two, thirty-twenty-three, thirty-twenty-four, thirty-twenty-five, thirty-twenty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty-ten, thirty-eleven, thirty-twelve, thirty-thirteen, thirty-fourteen, thirty-fifteen, thirty-sixteen,
that's ten ridge. This looks horrible, but <laughs> you get the point. Uh, this is more of a rectangle than a box, but um, a box in Ergo is made out of ten registers, and the first four registers. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yep, the first four registers are reserved for use by the protocol. So the first register, which is uh, R0, if you have any experience in programming, you will know that in the world of programming, we like to start counting at zero, not at one. So R0 has uh, the value of the box in nano ergs. So what's that? Do I hear? What do I hear? Someone, can you please uh, mute your mic? Unless, unless you have a question. So R0 contains the value of the box in nano ergs. Then R1 contains what's known as the guard script or the smart contract. R2 is where you can uh, where you can store any native assets, uh, any any tokens that a, a token that you may have issued on Ergo. And then R3. Oh no, I meant to put out R3 outside. R3 has information about the box's creation, like the transaction ID that issued or that created the box, um, the height at which um, the box was created, um, and a few other a few other details that are essentially, like I said, it's creation creation information about the box. And then the rest of the registers R4 through R9 are reserved, essentially. Um, so you can store arbitrary data here. You can store any any type of information you might want um, that can be that can be read by by an application. Uh, any questions so far? I have a question uh, for the guard script. Is that the actual smart contract or is that the default script that allows you to spend that box? What do you mean by the default script? Uh, I figured there's like a script there so only the person that owns that, I guess, private key can access that box or spend it? Yes. Got it. So yes. this is not, so the guard script is not the smart contract or it the guard, is? The guard script is the smart, the smart contract. Okay. And that's uh, the yes. question. Sorry oh. if I'm taking up. Um, I noticed a sample one through the learnings. Uh, it looked like a hash. So is this a reference to the script somewhere else? Can you say that again? Uh, in the learnings, I noticed that the guard script was like a hash or like a really long string. Is mm -hmm. that a reference to another location that contains that script? Um, not sure I understand your question. Um, it uh, is. Okay. Go ahead. No, I might be like confusing. So I don't know if I'm like, asking the right question. I was just I was just curious on how that hash can be the smart contract. Like I don't know how that hash is the I guess the script itself. That was kind okay. of question. Well, let's let's dive into that. So your original question is is that the default script or the smart contract? The answer is both. It could be both. So it could be it could be so it could be a script that says say only arson can spend this box um and if you know when when you go and try to spend this box and you sign for the transaction uh if you have the the private key that, that corresponds 
to the public key, public key in the script, then you will be able to spend it. But the script can also, you know, be more complex. Uh, it could check for conditions um, and so on and so forth. Uh, but ultimately, yes, the the the, the, scope, the, the contract is compiled into um, the the contract has an address uh, essentially, um, and the here let me let me show you what I mean by that. So if we if we do the simplest scenario, right? Say uh, I have a box right here. Here, let me move. Let me move my. Let me move my screen over here. So let's say I have. Let's say I have this box with ten erg. Now, there's more stuff in this box than just the value, but for simplicity's sake, um, and I want to send. Um, I want to send you arson. I want to send you uh, Fiber, right? So this transaction will take one input and it will produce, well, technically three outputs. One is going to be a box containing five erg that's going to you. Another box containing the change, in this case, five erg, going back to me. And then there's the, uh, as always, the, the, minor, the minor fee or the transaction fee. So what does the script of this box, which I sent to you, look like? So it would look something like this. Um, So this, this is essentially a piece of ergo script. This is a script. The rules of this script say only Arsen can spend this box. So this script gets compiled and then an address is produced for this script. In this case, the address that comes out of this compiled script would be your address or an address that you provide. Um, if the script was more complex or it, yeah, if, if, if the script contained something else or, you know, it was, it was more complex, then that would produce a different address. But when it comes down to it, um, when, when when I send when, when I send um, a box or when I send erg to to an address that you provide, that address is 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 you know essentially the script that is guarding this box. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. So that that guard script is that with that example they said. Um... That's yeah. Problem. Yeah. So, so in in yeah in 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 the simplest case, the guard script says only the o only only the person that has the private key that corresponds to this public key can spend this box, and the address for that script for 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 that script in this case would come out to be your address. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any 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 other questions about this? Um, I have one question about the uh, box and address. So if I understand well, the one box is attached to one and only one address, right? Yes, uh, a box a box is tied to an address. Yes, an address. and 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 how about ahead. an address? An address can contain many boxes or only um, one box. 
an address there, there can be more than one box uh at an address yes okay okay yes okay. Yeah, there, can be more, there can be more than one box at an address and so that's a good segue into the different kinds of addresses that 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 we might deal with um in ergo so if i ask you to to give me um your address right um we all know what that what, what that's like uh but i could also give you the address of a smart contract um and you could send boxes to that address and then when you or some process goes to from here let's let me let me illustrate this so uh, i apologize is there a way i can hold my hand up uh unfortunately not on discord um what's up do you have a question uh yeah my my question was about the multi boxes um i noticed on nautilus that i have a few erg uh i don't uh i don't know what to call the the sense like a cush piece if you know uh nano ergs nano ergs um uh uh, I notice I have a few nano ergs on a, a bunch of box addresses. Is that because there's a bunch of boxes in my wallet? Is that how that works? Sort of. Um, so you have you can you you can have multiple addresses. Um, you you can have multiple addresses, and what's happening in that case is that. So you have address A and you have address B. What you're seeing is you have one or more boxes whose, whose value amount to what you see at that address. And you can send, you know, the value of that address to, you know, to, to, just, to just one address if you would like. Cryo, you have your hand up. Oh, I cannot hear you. How about now? Yep. Cool. Okay. So my push to talk works only if I have myself unmuted. Got it. Okay. So base, I just want to say, say this because I think it clicked in my head. Basically, I've used Uroi a lot and there's, there's a bunch of different addresses and you can send transactions to any of those addresses, but it always shows up in your wallet. Mm -hmm. So is that the, is that what you're talking about right now that what he's talking about where he you have a bunch of different addresses um but those are all linked to one public key i guess not one public key one private key so to clarify to clarify something um a wallet doesn't hold boxes um a wallet you can think of a wallet as a as a window into the blockchain and what a wallet does is, so in your wallet, you, you know, you, your wallet manages your private and your public key. And using your private key, uh, it generates, using your private key, a public key is generated. And then using, using your public key, uh, addresses are generated. So with a combination of private and public keys, you can, you can generate multiple addresses. Uh, and you can prove ownership of any of those addresses with your private key. So what a, what a, what a wallet does is it scans the set of UTXOs in the blockchain and it filters them by boxes that it filters them by boxes whose address private, no, sorry, whose address or public key corresponds to your private key. So that's why your wallet may show multiple addresses with different balances each, but for convenience purposes, it just adds everything up and shows you one unified balance. But um, going back to the to the question or the idea of how um, of how data, how information is stored and kept track of in a in a utxo based blockchain 
Uh, I made a drawing somewhere up here. Uh, I'll just do it again. Let me, uh, okay. Um, like I had said, oh, where are you? Like I had said, you can think of the blockchain as this, you know, this, this large, sorry, I'm having to look back and forth. Okay. You can think of, of the blockchain as this, this large, you know, Mailbox. containing, you know, little, little boxes. And this box right here might be associated or tied to cryos address this one over here might be tied to um george's uh address this one over here might be tied to david's address and so on and so forth and there can be more than one box tied to the same address and if you have the corresponding private key when you go to pass that box as an input to a transaction, then you will be able to unlock to unlock it. You will be able to spend it. Otherwise, the transaction will fail. Does that does that make sense? Can you say that one more time? So in the in in the blockchain as a whole, the blockchain as a whole is a set of of, of boxes, right? It's a collection of of little boxes containing different stuff, different information, different amounts of ER, different assets, different data in its registers. Um, and as mentioned, each box is, to simplify it, each box is associated with an address, is tied to an address, right? So this box here might be associated with Cryos address, this box over here may be associated with David's address, so on and so forth. So again, each box is associated with an address. And if you have the private key that can prove ownership of that address, then you can spend that box. And all a wallet does is, given your private and your public keys, it looks through the set of UTXOs or boxes in the chain, and it shows you the ones that correspond to your private key. It shows you the ones that you, in theory, would be able to spend. And then it adds up the value of all those boxes, and that's how it shows you a balance. Like going to the post office. How do you mean? Like you have multiple PO boxes, and you can see all those different boxes. However, you can only access that as long as you have the key to in that a way box. yeah yeah that's 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 one way to think of it now imagine if you have all these parcels and out of convenience when you come to uh you know to to usps they told you hey you have 10 items or 10 letters or 10 packages across these three or four different parcels uh, that's essentially what a wallet is doing for you. It's telling you out of all these boxes that I have that I have identified are associated to your private key. This is the what the value of each of those adds up to. So so really a wallet is 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 a tool for for convenience in this case. Um, so does that make sense? Any 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 more questions about this? Okay, cool. So let me go back here. Let's see, so we've established that instead of having a table like structure, um, you know, with, with addresses, with corresponding balances, um, a UTXO chain is composed of a, of a collection of, of, of these objects, of, of these units. Um, and each of these boxes has uh, is, is is tied to an address. Um, now, if you have the right lock to 
sorry, the right key to, to open that lock, you can access the content uh, of a box. So when does this happen? So let's say we have this box, right? Um, and this has tenor. And I go ahead and I, you see this, it's, it's, it, it's interesting to think about it this way because um, when you're using a wallet, it abstracts away a lot of details for you. You don't, you don't really have to think about uh, which boxes can I spend or can I spend this box? A, a, a wallet will show you um, the boxes that, that, that you can spend. And so um, from a user's perspective, you just, you know, you just grab an address, drop it into a text box and you say, okay, I want to send X amount to this person and that's it. But um, if, if, if you're writing an application uh, or writing code uh, to build a transaction, um, you have to look up, you have to find, you have to fetch, um, the box that you want to spend um and then when you build a transaction like um like i mentioned a, tra a transaction has inputs and outputs so what are the inputs um to a transaction boxes um and then when you go to um sign and build a transaction um it'll run the script it'll 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 yeah it'll it'll run the script in the box to determine whether you can spend it or not and so um if so if you can spend it then great um it'll produce outputs new outputs that will later be able to be used as inputs to other transactions transaction 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 uh, can you guys see this okay it's oh boy i really need to get my uh my uh my whiteboard uh sorted out uh but anyway um so we've talked about addresses and how addresses uh how boxes are associated with addresses um and how boxes in the U utxo model um have register uh, sorry in in ergo in particular have registers um, the first four registers contains information. Um, the first four registers are reserved for the protocol, and then the remaining the remaining uh, registers can be used to um, store any sort of arbitrary information that that uh, that you might want to use, for instance, in 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 a DAP. Um, about everything that we have covered so far, are there any lingering questions? Nope. Are we good? Okay. I'm curious about this like tree branch transaction thing, but that's about it. I kind of want us to go over the register so we don't take up too much time though. So I don't I don't wanna So we will we will time. we will dive more into into this in the next uh in the next lecture because we'll be talking about um multi transactions. Uh, so save your questions about this for next class but what about registers uh what questions do you have about registers specifically uh i i really don't like i said i'm still learning all of this stuff though i'm glad that you went over guard script because it helped me understand um that's about it i have a question about the register 
Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so what's in R zero? You said it would hold value of nano ergs. Yes. And R two would be the asset. So like, what's the difference between that? Between uh, okay, between R zero and R two. So mm -hmm. so erg is you know the the the. Na the the native asset of, of, of the Ergo blockchain. Um, and then you can also issue tokens on Ergo. Uh, you can issue tokens that are not Ergo. Uh, and so if, say, you, you, you issue, I don't know, a token called the Dude Also. Um, if you looked at the box that contains, uh, you know, your token, you would find that uh, in R2. R2 is, is, is dedicated specifically to hold any tokens that are not Ergo. Okay. Okay. So, like, in my wallet, I see me go rang. I don't know how to say it. But... <laughs> yeah, me, me go rang. Yeah. So, that would be in R2, right? Yeah. So, again, another, another convenience uh, that wallets provide. Uh, under the hood, your wallet is, you know, like I like I said, it's reading, it's it's getting, it's reading the contents of the boxes that are associated with your private key, and it's just you know showing you in a nice friendly user interface. Oh, these are the these are the assets other than Ergo, uh, sorry, other than Erg that 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 you have in your in your wallet. But really, what that means, there is an asset called Migo Ren in a box that you can spend. Okay. okay. Yeah, so any, 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 yeah, you're welcome. Any non erg tokens are stored in, in R2. And you can, and you can, yes, you can have more than, you can have more than one uh, token stored in, 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 a, in a single box. Um, so I have a question about NFT. So how, how NS, NFT can store information in, in the register like this. Um. How NFTs can store information in the registers. Um, that is a good question that I think I know half the answer to. So let's put a pin on that and I'll get back to you about a next class because I want to confirm. I want to confirm before I, 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 I give you an answer. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? What's the creation info register? It has stuff like um, the transaction ID that uh, that issued the, sorry, I keep saying issued because I've been working with NFTs, but um, it's not incorrect to say that. Uh, it, the transaction ID that created the, the box, um, I believe the block uh, the block height at which the box was created. Um, it also ha I've never used it. I've I've just read about this, but it it also has um, has something called a uh, max creation height, which is it's it, it has something to do with payment channels. Uh, so you might create a payment channel, and you know you 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 could say it is only valid up until this block height. Uh, but the key, the key pieces of information that it has about about a about a box is the transaction ID that created and the block height at which it was created. And then, like I said, these these the remaining ones are are empty uh, and available, you know, for you to put any any sort of information you might want. Let me let me give you some examples. Um, let me give you some examples. Um, to, to, to you know to better illustrate what you know what's the utility of this so i will use as an example uh the the group project the final project that that i built with my teammates uh during you know my cohort so we built uh or we modeled um we modeled out uh the design of a collateral lending uh uh service Right. So 
let's say you are someone that wants to come and request a loan uh, and you want to ask for, I don't know, say 10 ERG, how, how would you convey that? You could, in a register, store that information. Uh, you, could, you, you, you could store that I am requesting 10 ERG and then um, ADAP would read that and render that in a user interface so that when a lender comes you know, looking for loans that they may want to fulfill, uh, that information of I want 10 ERG uh, was stored in that in, in you know anywhere from R4 to R9 uh, and read out to a user interface. Um, or for example, uh, you will want to know who was the person that requested the loan. Uh, you could store some sort of identifier uh, uh, for the for the lender in in one of these registers. So that you could also uh, display that in, in not not also for 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 displaying, but also for for keeping track who you know of, of who's engaged in you know in, in, in this process. If a if a lender uh, you know decides to fund the loan, no, before we even get to funding, the terms for the loan, uh, where do you keep track of that? You could keep you you could store it in 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 a traditional database outside of the blockchain, uh, but you could also store it in a register and then it would live on chain. Um, I like uh, an analogy that I heard someone use about boxes and you can think of boxes as tiny databases themselves that uh, that can you know contain information and you can read that information to make decisions about uh, you know how to build a transaction or, the information in the registers can also be accessed by uh, a smart, I keep saying smart contract because it's a common term that's used, uh, but uh, information in, in, in the registers are accessible to a script. So you can write a script that reads the data uh, or some data in, you know, in the registers of, of um of of its box or other boxes uh that are inputs or outputs to the transaction is that does that make sense no that was a, i know it was kind of a lot but um uh, does that make sense I think I almost had something. Uh, if you can do it again. Yeah, of course. So a box has a script, right? The script. I got info registers are accessible to a script. Yes, yes. The contents of a register are accessible to a script. And I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to draw to illustrate this because that was a mouthful. Um, let's see. So, doo -doo, where are we? We are here. Okay, I'm gonna bring focus of my tablet over here. Okay. So we've 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 established already that uh, boxes have scripts, and those scripts can be as simple as uh you know the 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 public key of a recipient or it could be more complex uh logic that you know checks for conditions and whatnot so um let's let's model out a, a simple transaction with two inputs okay so have a transaction here and then, um, I don't know, say we create two outputs, right? So let's focus on this box right here. The script in this box, or the script of this box, it can read or it has access to the contents of its registers, 
by it, I mean the box, or it can also check the contents of the registers of this other input or this output or this output. Uh, let me give you an example of some uh, of a case where, where you where you might want to do something like that. So let's say you have a script that you want to use to issue NFTs, right? So um, that, uh, okay, we had about four minutes. I'll wrap this up real quick. So um, let's say that you have a script that you want to use for issuing NFTs, right? And so that script could check that, um, for instance, this output box has a token with a quantity of one. Because if you remember, um, it was R2 that can contain uh, native assets, right? So as part of the information of, of the native asset is the ID of the asset itself and then the amount, right? So you could have a script um, in, in an input box that checks that this output box that you are proposing to create has a token of a quantity no greater than one because an NFT is you know, supposed to be only of quantity one. And because uh, of the ability of the script to check or read the content of the register of this output, it can do something like that. And if the quantity of that token is greater than one, then the transaction cannot be, it cannot be made. So in a nutshell, cryo, yes, a script can read the script of the script of a box can read the registers of it, its box and any other boxes involved in the transactions, the inputs and the outputs. Only involved in the transaction? Only involved in the transaction, yes. It has no notion of anything outside the scope of the transaction. Um, there is no notion of global state in, 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 in a UTXO based blockchain. Um, every, any, anything and everything that you pass into the transaction as inputs or outputs, that's, that's all that you know. Um, as opposed to, for instance, in Ethereum, you have global state. Uh, you can, you can reference, you can reference uh, state outside of the transaction, not, not in the UTXO model. Any other questions? I had one more. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, you're good. So these other registers, you said they're reserved for other information. Is that part of what gives uh, or go its, uh, well, I don't know anything about it, but its Oracle capabilities? Uh, par partially, partially, yes. Um, so one thing uh real quick to wrap it up so a transaction has uh inputs and outputs and it also has this this thing called data inputs so any inputs to the transaction uh need to be spent and when you spend or when you attempt to spend uh, a box uh the transaction you know it will it will it will execute the the script and the inputs and if those script uh you know succeed if, if they return true if they evaluate to true then you can be spent but the key thing that i'm trying to to drive home here is all inputs must be spent um but there is you you can also pass into a transaction this thing called data inputs which is nothing more than than boxes but any box that you pass as a data input, the script of, of data inputs does not get executed. So it's just like additional information that you're passing to the transaction that might be used as a script. 
So I have not dealt very, I, I, I know little about oracles uh, on Ergo based on what I've read. I, have, I haven't consumed oracle information, but from what I have read and been told by people who have, is that you can pass um, um, a, a, like an, an oracle pool might produce a box that has information in its registers and you can pass uh, a box produced by an oracle pool as a data input to a transaction so that a script can access that information from the registers. So, um, well, that's, uh, that's an hour. So we covered addresses, we covered boxes, we covered registers, and we covered a little bit about transactions as well. Um, we're going to go into more details about transactions uh, starting next week. Uh, but yeah, that, uh, that, is, that is the first class. And uh, I'll stay a few more minutes uh, to answer any more questions that there may be. But uh, if there are any, if there are not any more questions, then uh, that's class for today. And thank you for showing up.